Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. This is the second in a three-part series where I'm going to talk about guns and gun control. Yesterday, I talked about the New Zealand mass shootings, and you can see that below. There's a link to that video in my description box. Today, I'm going to talk about why more guns leads to less crime. And tomorrow, I'll be talking about the true intent of the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. To preface, I want to tell you that I refer to gun control only and ever only as victim disarmament because that is what it is. And the rest of this video is going to try to show you why that is. Now, victim disarmers have a pipe dream. They believe that if you simply eliminated all guns everywhere, then there would be no gun-related crime, which sounds nice on the face of it, but it's ultimately ludicrous. In the United States alone, there are currently something like 393,347,000 firearms in private hands. Contrast that to the U.S. population, which as of this recording is around 331 million. That means that there are over 62 million more firearms than there are citizens. And that doesn't even begin to address the billions of guns worldwide in private hands. And while it might be at least conceivably possible to restrict to get rid of all guns in the United States, I, I, which I honestly think would just trigger a second American revolution, it's impossible to get rid of them in the entire world because the U.S. doesn't control the laws of the rest of the world. And that means that even if it was completely outlawed and you somehow figured out a way to get rid of 300 plus million guns in the United States, even if you did that, there's still going to be a black market for guns that are among criminals because they're criminals. And by definition, they don't care about the law. So they will always and forever have access to guns via the black market. It might make the gun a little bit more expensive, but it's still going to allow criminals to have it. And the biggest problem with black markets is that they create more crime. Just look at alcohol prohibition in the 1930s. It gave immense power to gangs that still exist today and that created turf wars in which not only gang members but also innocent bystanders were often killed. Look at modern drug prohibition, which gives immense powers to gangs and which creates turf wars in which not only gang members but innocent bystanders are often killed. If you want to end this warfare, by the way, if you want to end the warfare, it's real simple. Just adhere to the United States Constitution because it gives no authority whatsoever for the federal government to be involved in any way in drugs. And thus, under the Tenth Amendment, this is an issue left to the states or the people. If you want drugs to be illegal, take it up with your state government. But if you want to end this gang warfare right now, you can do it the same way as it ended in the 1930s by ending drug prohibition. And this will turn criminal drug dealers into honest merchants, just as happened with uh, alcohol prohibition, and just as they were before we had drug prohibition, because we've not always had it. It used to be possible for you to send a kid, your kid, down to the uh, local drugstore with a note to pick up morphine with no prescription, just a note. Hasn't always been this way. It is impossible to get rid of guns. And as the saying often goes, if you take guns away from law-abiding people, then only criminals will have guns. And this is true. One of the other reasons I talk about gun control as victim disarmament is because simply this. A couple of pounds of lead and steel can equalize a 120-pound woman against a 250-pound rapist. She has the ability by simply reaching into her purse to fend off an attacker and avoid rape, beating, and possibly death, because they're all things that happen during sexual assault. It'll also equalize a 90-year-old grandmother with almost any kind of an attacker, whether it's a rape, because believe it or not, that happens, a home invader of some kind, or just some psychopath on the street. And this is why gun control is really victim disarmament. You can't eliminate guns. It is an impossible pipe dream. If you take guns out of private hands, you are creating more victims be, for criminals who, by definition, do not care about laws. Now, if you want a perfect example of this, behind me, because I never put anything on my green screen that isn't intentional, I choose everything very, very carefully. It's almost never the same. If you want a good idea about this, look at this building behind me. This is 
a convenience store on Chicago's south side. So let me do something because I think it's fun. We'll do it a little bit in the style of Jack Webb from Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> the story you're about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> This is the city, Chicago, Illinois. It boasts one of the highest shootings and homicide rates in the world. Between January 1st and March 19th, 2019, there have been 350 individuals shot in Chicago, 65 of whom were murdered. Chicago also boasts some of the most strict victim disarmament laws in the world. It was Saturday, November, October 31st, 2015. It was cold in Chicago. I was living in Redfield, Iowa, a suburb of Des Moines, nowhere near the crime. I was working 24-7, 365 as an IT wonk. I had a number of co-workers and a boss, but I had absolutely no connection with this crime. At 7 p.m., 55-year-old Reg Reginald Gildersleeve entered the store that you see behind me. He announced a robbery and brandished his gun to the clerk behind the counter. A female employee entered the store area from the back. Gildersleeve pointed his weapon at her and made her go to the back of the store. At that point, a customer inside the store drew his concealed weapon, fired multiple times at Gildersleeve, killing him. And I just got myself a copyright strike. <clears throat> so, this type of crime is thwarted all the time all over the United States. Imagine for a moment that Chicago didn't have such strict victim disarmament laws. How many of those 350 individuals shot in Chicago, 65 of whom were murdered in Chicago, since January 1, 2019 of this year until March 19th, 2019, the day I recorded this? 350 people shot, 65 murdered. How many of those could have been stopped? How many of those 65 people would be alive today had they the ability to protect themselves from their murderer. And moreover, this is one you guys, victim disarmers, are really going to hate. Victim disarmament is completely and utterly uh, heartless. It's heartless. Someone in favor of victim disarmament would rather see a woman raped, strangled to death with her own pantyhose, and her body dumped in an alley, rather than see her with a gun in her hand. So if you're a victim disarmer, I want you to chew on that for a moment because you are utterly heartless. You would rather see a woman raped, strangled to death with her own pantyhose, and dumped into an alley rather than see her with a gun in her hand. What sort of person does that make you? And while it may be counterintuitive, more guns in private hands leads to less crime, and the reason for that is actually very simple. Your average bad guy, they don't want any trouble. Usually they just want your money or your property without much hassle. If you resist in some way, he very well may kill you, but he'd frankly prefer that you weren't there at all or at least cowered in a corner rather than putting up any kind of fight. Having a gun on your hip introduces potential trouble for the bad guy. If he can see that you're carrying a gun or even if there's some good chance that you may have one concealed about your person, the chances are he won't even try to commit his crime. This is, in fact, borne out by decades of FBI statistics, which clearly show that when a state enacts a concealed carry law, violent crime in that state drops like a rock, but it increases in any neighboring states that do not allow their citizens to protect themselves. What happens is real simple. They get scared over here. They go somewhere else where they can find disarmed victims. And then there is the issue of mass shootings and terrorist attacks. There is not a single mass shooting in the United States or otherwise that could not have either been eliminated, reduced, or potentially at least staved off were victims not disarmed. Take 9-11 as a perfect example. Americans are unconstitutionally stripped of our Second Amendment rights in airports and on aircraft. 
This wasn't the case, by the way, until the 1980s. Prior to that, any citizen could take any gun on any aircraft, and the sole question that anyone would ask them would be the flight attendant. She might say, um, do you, if you had a long gun, do you want me to take that and secure it up front where it won't get hurt, as opposed to sticking it in the overhead bin? That was it. That was all you'd ever be asked. There's a brilliant cartoon here, by the way. This is by a uh, buddy of mine, Scott Beezer. Um, you can uh, see this cartoon on his website and see other information on his website and other work that he's done. Uh, great guy, um, libertarian. I've known him for years. Uh, you can find his website in a link below. And it perfectly illustrates how 9-11 could have been avoided. And while, you know, and I certainly agree in this case, a picture is worth a thousand words, Scott, I'm still going to sit down and, and you know, try to explain it anyway. Had victims not been stripped of their constitutional rights on aircraft, 9-11 would not have happened. And that's because the terrorists would have been fired upon by an unknown number of people from totally unknown directions. In fact, it's likely that the terrorists wouldn't even have tried because they would have known that it would be utterly futile to do so. Now take the recent mass shootings in New Zealand. What if some of those poor victims had been armed rather than being reduced to cowering in the corners? At the very best, the murderer wouldn't even have tried because he would know it would be futile since he would be fired upon and killed by any number of unknown people from totally unknown directions. At the very worst, it would have reduced the number of deaths because armed individuals would have killed this murderer before he had a chance to kill too many other people. You can take any mass shooting anywhere that has ever occurred and the same thing applies. At the very best, the shooter would, shooter would even have attempted it because they would know the futility of it since he would be killed from an unknown number of people from unknown directions. At the very worst, it would have reduced the number of deaths because an unknown number of armed individuals would have killed the murderer from unknown directions before he had a chance to kill too many people. So, the last thing, really the last thing I want to point out, I want to talk to victim disarmers, I'm talking straight to you guys now. If you are a victim disarmer, you must always remember that you are so heartless that you would rather see a woman raped murdered by being strangled to death with her own pantyhose and her body tossed in an alley rather than see her with a gun in her hand. What sort of person does that make you? And that is all that I have to say about that for today. So please tune in again tomorrow for the last in this series, which will be the true intent of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. So thanks for watching me. And if you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, and share me on uh, social media. And to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via subscribe star, my PayPal tip jar, or a link on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of those in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch. News and commentary from the heartland. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing. The control and manipulation of minds.